I mean, talk about false advertisement. I bought this book thinking it was gonna teach me how to get away with murder, but that's not actually what it's about. It's coffee time. Hi guys, I'm Kasha. Welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our coffee times to discuss books and horror. And today I'm here with another book review. This time is another YA horror mystery thriller. We're here to talk about Getting Away with Murder by Catherine Foxfield. Getting Away with Murder is one of the newest YA horror thrillers and it was just released in July 2023. Catherine Foxfield, the author, is already a veteran in this because it is her fifth YA horror mystery thriller. Her books mostly focus on a group of people that are thrown in together. They might or might not know each other, but one thing is for sure, they all have secrets. There's always some sort of killer or something evil on the loose and they have to stop it before every one of them ends up dead. In Getting Away With Murder, we follow two twin sisters. One of them is Saffron, and she has just started a new job at a high-tech company that is preparing the ultimate escape room experience. Thanks to the help of an artificial intelligence robot called Lightman, the company is offering a once-in-a-lifetime experience and an escape room like you've never seen before. Everything will be controlled and curated by this robot and it will be specific to every single player. When Saffron is testing the game before they officially start receiving their first guests and customers, she gets really curious about, you know, this question that we all have in horror, which is if we would have all the stereotypes, you know, from high school people who would be the one to survive the night? We have the pretty girl, we have the jock, we have the funny one, we have the weird one. And so we will always wonder who would be best fit to survive a horror movie. And Lightman, the artificial intelligence robot that is working as well in the escape rooms, gets really curious as well about this. And the robot wants to learn more about the stereotypes of humans. So he decides that it is time to invite people and test that theory of who would survive if you put this type of different characters in a life or death scenario. So a group of teenagers is invited to test the game, to be the first ones to try the escape rooms. And one of the participants is going to be Saffron's twin sister, Georgia. But what they don't know is that actually the games are deadly and they have to try to survive. The main characters in our story are our twin sisters, Saffron and Georgia, who could not be more different from each other. One of them is a rule breaker and the other one follows the rules to the T. So Saffron likes to take chances, take risks. She's a little bit more spontaneous. And then we have Georgia who loves to follow the rules. She loves to have plans and she is a know-it-all. We also have Lightman, who is an important character. It is the robot, it is the artificial intelligence that is trying to help um, to curate the games to people. So Lightman wants to learn a lot about human behavior, about human stereotypes, so that he can then decide which escape rooms are better for which participants. And trying to do so, he ends up putting our group of teenagers in a lot of danger for the escape room ultimate experience. And in order to find out who will survive the night, we do have a bunch of really interesting and very different characters. We have the princess, the artist, the criminal, the geek, um, you name it, like all of these stereotypes from high school. And it is a lot of fun to see because they are introduced with these stereotypes. But then of course, as the book moves forward, we will see that stereotypes are not exactly always true. Escape rooms is something that has, you know, won a lot of popularity in the last years. There's been, I think, more movies done on escape rooms than books, but it's something that honestly has always been integrated in mystery thrillers and horror. There's always been characters trapped somewhere that have to find a way out that is literally a escape room. Uh, but now we are getting into the era of more high tech, escape rooms, like the movie Escape Room, which offered a lot more, you know, high-tech, 
really complicated escape rooms and in this case we have escape rooms that are very high tech but at the same time they are grounded in reality and are controlled by an artificial intelligence so it also brings up the question of you know what would happen if all of these escape rooms would be really basically controlled by a robot but escape rooms are a concept that is very thrilling it's very like it gives a lot, a lot of adrenaline a lot of tension and that is something that really works well in the book following the approach of these high-tech escape rooms we also have the topic of the artificial intelligence and what would happen if we keep making progress in that area it's something it's a very hot topic at the moment in general also specifically because of the actors strike and director's strike in hollywood and it is something that i think humanity has always struggled with of course when we develop more technology we get a lot of advantages from it but how far is too far how far are we willing to go and what will happen if we give these artificial intelligence so much power it's also something that is not new because movies already like one of my favorites terminator already kind of where touching that um, idea of what if machines would turn against us so it's something that works really well in this book as well especially also combined with the escape rooms the book also touches a lot on stereotypes in how we are being judged so quickly and basically it explores that stereotypes or things that we assume about people are not always correct there is always a lot more um, inside of that person and also humans are very unpredictable and you cannot really tell the things that they're gonna do the things that they're gonna say just based on first impressions and it works really well in this case because we have a YA book so we have teenagers and when you're a teenager you're being basically forced to pick aside you have to fit a box people love to put you in boxes and you don't even know who you are so you're still kind of trying to figure it out so stereotypes don't really work the book includes mixed media which i thought was really cool to see you have chat logs and you have like game logs and it is an interesting way to see how our characters were testing the game before they were locked into it the story is told from the point of view of our twin sisters so we're gonna have chapters from saffron's point of view and chapters from georgia's point of view and i thought that was really interesting you can really tell them apart because they have such different personalities and I thought it also kept the book entertaining to switch between their perspectives and this also allows the reader to know what's going on in different parts inside of the game. The games that take place in a renovated bunker from the 1950s and that helps a lot with bringing a lot of atmosphere and it really feels claustrophobic. Being trapped in a bunker and it is also escape rooms that have not been tested before so they are basically being guinea pigs here adds a lot to the feeling of being a little bit scared and unsettled and you don't know what's going to happen to these characters. As they progress through the escape rooms you really feel it's getting more and more claustrophobic. You really feel like asphyxiating. It really manages to keep that tension going to the very end. The escape rooms are themed on childhood games, which I thought was fantastic because childhood games and things that we know and relate to our childhood are normally things that brings us comfort. But now the author is getting these things that we're supposed to be, you know, comforted by and things that should remind us of happier times and they're turning them into a nightmare <laughs> so i thought that also was really effective and i think it's a lot of fun like visually in my head i was having so much fun imagining these games it's also games that you know from your childhood or most of them you've seen before so it's also easy to immerse yourself inside of the rooms instead of having like this new um kind of rooms that you've never seen before it just makes it easier for you to immerse yourself in the story and kind of feel what the characters are feeling and you know that the characters need to solve the puzzles in order to move to the next room if they want to survive but apart from the horror of these escape rooms that might kill you you also have a psychological aspect of it because 
you're also following a group of people that don't know who they can trust and they don't know who is behind all of these, who has strapped them there, who is making them play the games and so they are all kind of fighting each other, they're all trying to figure out who's behind it and secrets are gonna come to light. What I can tell you for sure is that following them through the games is a lot of fun, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to figure out their secrets and if they are good or bad, it's a lot of fun. And I can also tell you that sadly, not everyone will make it out alive. I did enjoy the violent deaths and the bloody moments and the accidents, but were they accidents really? Catherine Foxfield likes to write books with darker themes and I think so far the books that I have read have been extremely entertaining. She says that her inspiration comes from when she was younger and basically she used to read a lot of Agatha Christie point horror books and she was also a lot into Doctor Who. Her characters are always very diverse and most in her books you have a group of people that have to try to figure out what's going on who has lured them somewhere, who has trapped them somewhere before it's too late and they have to survive and that is a trope that I really really enjoy. I love when a group of people go somewhere and they are trapped and they have to make it out alive. So if that's something that you also enjoy I can really recommend you her books. Let's go through the list of books that she has written so far. We have Good Girls Die First, It's Behind You, Tag, You're Dead, Come Out, come out whatever you are and getting away with murder. She has an upcoming short horror story that is featured in a really cool YA horror compilation coming out on the 13th of September called A Taste of Darkness and it includes 13 tales from YA horror authors. And she also has a new novel planned for 2024 called Things That Go Bump and we don't still have a cover reveal or anything for these but it is planned for 2024. The book did give me soul vibes, you know, you have a group of people that have been trapped, they are forced to play certain games or certain traps because they have to play, they don't have any other choice. If they want to survive, it's either that or already give up and die. If you have enjoyed other books and movies about escape rooms, I think you're gonna have a blast with this one. And as I've mentioned before, it includes that trope of a bunch of people trapped somewhere trying to make it out alive. There's a lot of secrets, there's conspiracies, and a lot of things are gonna be revealed. It's action-packed, there is killings, and honestly, it was my favorite so far by her. It's always interesting to see a bunch of strangers that are forced to play games together even though they don't know each other or they might even hate each other but they know that they have to play together if they want to survive even though they all have skeletons in their closets. This was my spoiler free review of Getting Away With Murder by Catherine Foxfield. Let me know down below if you read the book, if you enjoyed it, or which one is your favorite Catherine Foxfield book so far. For me so far is Getting Away With Murder. This has been for me the one that I had the most fun with, but I have enjoyed all the books by her that I have read so far. So I can really recommend it if you're looking to get into YA horror thrillers. Thank you guys as always so much for watching and I hope to see you all as always in our next coffee time. Bye!